Hi, welcome to SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak, and this is part two of our November 8th edition of Into the Weekend with Bet DSI, the show we do every Thursday with Brent, the headlines manager at DSI, where he discusses uh, the betting action he's seen over the past week, what the sharp sides are, what the public sides are, and what the big decisions for him are going to be. We just got finished talking about college football week 11. Now we're going to start talking about college uh, NFL week 10. Brent, thanks for doing this once again with us. All right, Peter. All right, now, before we talk about NFL week 10, Let's talk a little bit about NFL Week 9. Was it really as bad as everyone said? You know, Peter, we, we never talk about the previous week, and now you want to talk about the previous week. I'll so, tell you so, why. When it wasn't very good for us. Yeah, no, it, it, was, it was a rough week for us. And if you, you, know, if you look at the tape of our, our show last week, there was a lot of you know, public sharp splits, like um, Denver at Cincinnati, for example, yeah. um, that didn't, didn't turn out for us. Um, Arizona hung tough at Green Bay, but they didn't get it done either. So that wasn't very good for us. You had a ton of teaser money all over on Chicago. That didn't work out from the get-go. So it was a situation where there's a lot of games that were close. Um, Buffalo at Houston's another one where it was kind of close, but we just didn't get there. I mean, it, it's so this game is you know so difficult at times. We we were so close. You know, I mean, Cincinnati hung real tough with Denver in the second half, couldn't get there. Buffalo was close, didn't get there. Now Tennessee, of course, they didn't have a shot. But no, it, it was a rough weekend for us. Right. So it really was as bad as people said. It was losing weekend for you guys at DSI. Oh, absolutely. Wow. All right. And people said it was the worst uh, weekend, the worst NFL day in 30 years. Is that, is that accurate? Well, we don't like to keep track of all the bad right, days, right. Peter. But in your, in, <laughs> in your memory, it's definitely one of the worst weeks in your memory, right? It, it was one of the worst ones, yeah. All right. Okay, well, one big reason for it was, as you just alluded to, uh, there were a bunch of three-and-a-half-point road favorites. They were all road favorites, all more than a field goal, but less than a touchdown, and all of them covered. The public pounded all of them. They all of them covered. And this week we have two that are similar, Giants at Bengals and uh, Denver at Carolina. Is this the same deal where you got a ton of public action on the favorites, and if they both cover, you're going to get burned again? Well, in this one, we, we did take sharp action on Cincinnati at first at the opening number plus six. Mm -hmm. um, we're all the way down to minus four on the Giants right now. They're on the road as a favorite, and it's been nothing but public money, minus four. We've taken about eight more, eight times more bets on the Giants at minus four. Wow. Uh, dollar volume is about two times in favor of the Giants just because we've taken bigger bets on Cincinnati. But it's not a, as sharp a split as, as you would, you know, might expect, mm -hmm. but it's just that the, the sharp action we took was plus six, and that number went away pretty quickly. Right. Okay, so it was mostly about the number. And then Denver, Carolina, I mean, Peyton Manning, rolling, rolling. Is uh, the public pounding him again? Got money on and sharp money on both sides. Um, okay. You know, All sharp right. Sharp money that we respect took, took Denver minus four, which I thought was kind of surprising. And I got sharp money on Carolina plus the five. We're still at minus four right now on Denver. I could see that going to four and a half simply because we've taken – Ten times more bets on Denver. The money's about two, uh, two times in favor of uh, of them as well. And that's that's a game. You know, you can take a look at New England as a, a teaser team. We get every week. They're they're a big teaser team. Denver's a huge te teaser team this weekend. Baltimore is. The Seahawks are. Um, San Francisco is, and Pittsburgh as well. So you know, it's one of those those games where we've got sharps on both sides. So we just hope one of them blows the other team out. Wow. All right. There you go. And you just mentioned the, uh, the Seahawks game. That's one of the games I wanted to ask you about, mostly because uh, I previewed it with this guy. We had a fight back and forth about it. He liked Seattle. I liked the Jets. And then, uh, you know, I talked to uh, Dave Golikov, also a very well-respected capper. He liked Seattle as well. It seems like I'm the only guy who thinks the Jets are uh, a decent play here at, you know, six and a half or seven. What kind of action have you seen on this game? From this day forward, Peter, I consider you a Sharpie. Oh yeah, really? We've got sharp money. We've got sharp money on the Jets now. Yeah. With the Jets, that was when the line was six and a half. Right. The Seattle was six and a half, and they bought it to plus seven. I know sometimes your 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 viewers wonder if sharps actually do buy points, and you know, absolutely positively when it's on or off for three and around seven as well. Those are the only two numbers really that they're gonna they're gonna buy. Yeah. And in this case, they did buy the the Jets plus seven minus one twenty five, and my count is about three to one in favor of the Seahawks. My dollar volume is pretty much even, so that gives you an idea of the split there. And, and have you gotten any sharp action at all on Seattle minus six? No. No. Okay. Right. There you go. All right. Now let's talk about, uh, again, the most controversial game in the week this week uh, involves Atlanta, and I think it's just because people are trying to time when there's going to be a good time for them to get their first loss. Last week, some, a lot of people were, it was a very sexy pick to pick the Cowboys. That didn't happen. And this week, it's sort of the same deal. They're a favorite of less than a field goal uh, at the Saints. And um, I'm just wondering if, if, if you've gotten any sharp action on this game at all. No, this game has basically been, been, 
you know, public money all so far. Um, the dollar volume's pretty much even. The count slightly favors Atlanta, but you can see the public looking at this game saying, okay, you've got Atlanta undefeated and New Orleans got all this, you know, supposed potential in terms of being able to put up points. Mm-hmm. So you can see how they would be split on that. But at this point, I don't really have any sharp action involved in this game, Peter. All right, I'm a little bit surprised to hear that you're split because I know the public is used to the Saints being awesome and betting Drew Brees every week, but Atlanta is undefeated. You know, the Saints are under 500 and they're, you know, giving less than a field goal. I would think that would be a huge, huge, huge public side. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure that people are convinced about Atlanta just yet, and, and I don't think that, that, you know, a lot of batters are convinced that New Orleans is, is dead, so to speak. Um, you know, the Sharps could be sitting back waiting to see if this game goes to three, and if not closer to game time, perhaps they'll buy it, you know, buy the half a point to get them plus three. But right now, I just don't have a whole lot of sharp money involved in this game at all. All right, so tell us about the rest of the card. Uh, what are the notable uh, high-volume games you've gotten? Any other notable sharp public splits that you'd like to uh, share with us? And any games that are going to be big decision games for you? I've got a little bit of sharp money on Buffalo um, mm-hmm. plus 11 and a half. And other than that, it's been all public money on, on New England. Um, New England's at minus 11 right now. Like I said, the sharp action was plus 11 and a half. The count in terms of the number of wagers we've taken is about 10 to 1 in favor of New England. So that gives you an idea how big that chart right. is. Um, so that's going to be a bit of an ugly game for us. And again, the Baltimore Oakland's one that not a whole lot of people have been touching other than betting on Baltimore. And that's a case of if you've got all the injuries in terms of the running game to Oakland. So I guess people are staying off of Oakland because of that. But I can see Oakland backdooring that one for sure, especially at the current number, minus seven and a half. Um, Again, Minnesota with Percy Harvin being injured, that's a game where Sharps took under 47. So if you, you know, we're sitting at 46 right now, but that was pretty much about the number. Mm-hmm. Again, no Harvin, so you've got to count to about 8-1 to one in favor of Detroit. Money's about 8-1 to one in favor of Detroit as well. So it's not a sharp public split, but it is a case where you've got a lot of public mon- money on Detroit, Peter. Wow. Um, another one where it's just a, a case of public's involved, but not sharps to this point, is Dallas. We've got a lot of public money on Dallas right now. Um, again, that was a case where they, they took Dallas plus the one and a pick. Right now, we're sitting at minus one and a half and just have nothing on, on Philadelphia so far. Again, that's a team where you know people look like they had a whole lot of potential and perhaps they've soured on. Um, looking at an ugly dog, we've got two decent ugly dogs uh, this weekend, Peter. That's the St. Louis Rams and the Kansas City Chiefs. And uh, have those two uh, underdogs taken any sharp money? Are the Sharps fine? Sharp money on St. Louis, yeah. Sharp money on St. Louis plus the 12. Really? Sharp money on Kansas City is plus the 12 and a half. Hmm. All right. So looking over the total betting action for this NFL card, are you, uh, are you feeling more confident than you were last weekend? I mean, are, are you, is there any kind of disaster situation that you're afraid would happen where if it did, you'd have another horrible weekend? No, I don't think so, Peter. Um, you know, we've got decent two-way action on a lot of games so far. And again, like, Denver, for example, we kind of expected that. New England, we expect that. Giants, we expect that. And usually that stuff kind of evens out in the end. Um, Last week was a game where if you looked at it, you kind of got the feeling, well, we're going to need some help to to make some money this weekend. And that was definitely the case. And you didn't get the help. All right. Well, thanks once again. Another great call, Brent. And uh, thanks again for uh, doing all this uh, research and work. I know it definitely takes some uh, time out of your day to do it. We definitely appreciate it. And we will talk to you again next week.